Good morning. We are out here on this lovely morning, nice and cool before the sun really is in the heat of the day. And my big dog coming to say hi. <laughs> hi, Zeus. Hi, Zeus. <laughs> and we're going to be harvesting bee balm. Now, bee balm is one of those essential medicine cabinet herbs. And once we get some inside, I'm going to show you how to preserve it. And we're going to talk about its medicinal uses. So come along and join us. For those of you new here, I'm Christy and welcome to our channel. I have this bee balm that has been volunteering in my garden and now it's time to plant my pumpkin patch this week. So I'm gonna go ahead and harvest it. It's early morning, about 6.30 and this really is the best time of day to harvest your herbs because they've had time to dry off for the morning dew but they also haven't been baking in the sun all day so the volatile oils that are gonna use have the medicinal benefit are still going to be fresh, they're still going to be really potent. So this is the best time. Now when we harvest our bee balm, we want the leaves and the flowers. Those are the important parts. I'm gonna go ahead and harvest it at the stem because I wanna use all of this. Now normally, if you are wild crafting, if you're foraging fresh herbs, you would only take about 10% because you want these herbs to grow back and you want the pollinators and any animals that depend on them to be able to use them. However, this is a slightly different case because these are in my garden and they were gonna get ripped up anyway. Um, so this isn't like them growing in the wild, so we're gonna harvest them all, lest they go to waste. Bee balm is one of those that's pretty easy to, to tell, to identify. It's got really identifiable flowers that go all the way around and kind of mound up, and then the leaves are thin and, and pencil-ish. <laughs> so it's a pretty easy one to identify, but always, when you're foraging herbs, get a second and third opinion. Three is generally the accepted norm just to make sure you're getting the right one. Anything you're putting inside your body, you wanna make sure you are absolutely certain what it is. Now, another thing to note about bee balm is it can come in this lovely purple color. It can also come in a red color. So be on the lookout. Actually, I planted some of the red variety in my garden, so we'll probably have some of that later in the season. Um, so just be on the lookout. No, it can come in either of those colors. All right, let's harvest some bee balm. Ah, uh, it smells, <laughs> it smells really, really good. All right, we're here with our bee balm, also known as Minarda. That's the technical name for it. Or wild bergamot, you might hear some people call it. Um, now, you do want to rinse this and let it dry. I've already done that. Um, and you can absolutely use this fresh as a tea. But because I have so much of it, I'm gonna go ahead and dry it with my Excalibur dehydrator. Now before we get into how to dehydrate it, how to dry it, which parts of the plant to use, let's talk a little bit about the medicinal benefits. You can use this as a tea, a tincture, or a salve, and it has almost too many medicinal qualities to list. So one of the main reasons people use bee balm is because it's antimicrobial and it specifically attacks the type of microbes that cause respiratory infections. It's a really good way to fight off against those chest colds that you get. So this is an excellent way. And you can either make this into a tea for that or you can make a steam with it. And, and the way you make a steam with it is you take the leaves and the flowers and you would put it in some hot water, cover it with a towel to keep all the steam inside and let it sit and steep for about 10 to 15 minutes. You take the towel then and you pull it up and you put your head under it, not in the water, <laughs> don't drown yourself, but you take deep breaths of that steam and you breathe in the volatile oils from this and they fight off that infection. So that's one way to use it. You can also, like I said, use it as a tea and we'll actually do that towards the end of this video, show you how to do that. Um, and that will also fight off some of the microbes, fight off some of that infection. 
Bee balm doesn't just help fight off that infection, it actually has an antispasmodic in it, which is gonna help that cough, help relax your lungs and help break up the mucus. So this is an herb, absolutely 100% to have on hand before the winter cold months. And now in the summertime is the time you need to go find it and harvest it. Another thing it's really great for is gas, or tummy upset if you drink it in a tea. You can also use it as a balm or a poultice, which is just macerated um, wet leaves, and you can put it on your skin for like a burn or a sunburn. It helps with eczema as well. So as you can see, this herb is absolutely 100% one to keep in your medicine cabinet. And I am so blessed that I had this volunteer in my garden and it's definitely something that I'm gonna to continue to try to propagate and plant in my garden every year. As far as I've seen, I haven't seen any anywhere else on my property, but I can propagate it in the garden every year. And it grows beautifully here. Like I said, you can absolutely use these herbs fresh. And if you want to leave it somewhere and you want to just go harvest a little at a time, go for it. And then you can make a cup of tea as you need. But I harvested all of it because like I said, I had to plant my pumpkin patch, so it had to go. And um, also, I wanna be able to have it in the winter. And this, this plant, as lovely as it is, is not gonna live into the winter. So this is going to allow me to have some of this during cold and flu season. Now the most potent part of the plant are these leaves. However, the flowers also have volatile oils in them. So you can't just save the leaves, but I like having the flowers in there. And it also, the flowers color the tea a beautiful color. So um, we're gonna go ahead and save the, the leaves and the flowers. And I'm gonna put them in my dehydrator. I have this Excalibur dehydrator. Now, if you have a dehydrator, you wanna dehydrate these at 95 degrees. and anywhere from four to 12 hours, depending on the water content of these. So if you have an oven that goes down that low, maybe a bread proof setting on it, then you can absolutely dehydrate these in an oven. You can hang them upside down, but that'll take a lot longer until the leaves are crunchy. So I wanna get this done, and my dehydrator happens to be empty right now because we haven't really gotten into the, the swing of harvesting season yet, so we're gonna make use of it. When you're removing the leaves, you really don't wanna use like damaged leaves like this. You wanna use the nice fresh leaves. So that's something to keep in mind. We're gonna remove the leaves from the stem and I'm just gonna pull down gently like this. And this is gonna take a good long while and I'm gonna lay them on my tray. And again, if I have a really bad leaf, I can move it to the side. And I'm gonna pull all these leaves out. It smells amazing in here. <laughs> and pull out the flowers and you can stick them as well. So, we have a long way to go. <laughs> Let's get started. And I'm sure I can fill up these trays and then some, it'll probably be a few runs through the dehydrator, but that's amazing. I'm glad to have this much. Um, but you'll be surprised when you dehydrate how, how much water content gets sucked out and how this will condense down. I bet this is, this is about a jar's worth. Let's get started and let's get those leaves and the flowers on these trays. Now, when you're doing the trays, you wanna make sure you're not piling this too high if you're using a dehydrator um, and you wanna kinda of spread them out where they're just basically one layer here on this tray. Now, if you've ever bought fresh herbs before like this, you know that they're not cheap. But after experiencing the tedium of putting all these out, drying them, pulling the things, and and seeing the results, it, you kind of get an understanding of why these are so expensive because they do take a lot of intensive labor. This process of pulling the leaves off like this, removing the bad parts, pulling the useful parts off is actually called garbling. <laughs> That's kind of a fun term in herbalism. Garbling, let's garble the bergamot. <laughs> All right, garbling is complete and we ended up with six whole trays of these really fragrant leaves and flowers. And I wish there was smell-o-vision in here because, oh, it smells beautiful. <laughs> 
So we're gonna take these down to the dehydrator and we're gonna put them in at 95 degrees and like I said, four to 12 hours depending on um, the water content of these, probably around five or six, but we'll check on them every once in a while. So let's go get them in. Now this is an Excalibur dehydrator. It's a nine tray. Um, it is a workhorse, especially during preserving months. We just slide the trays in here. And I'm gonna put space in between them because the more space that can the air can circulate around, the better and quicker they will dry. You can fill this all the way up. But again, the more air circulation this has, the better. I'm gonna have enough mostly to do that. I'm gonna have to put a couple back to back, but that's all right. All right, the lid just goes on right here, just like that. We're gonna set this temperature, it even gives you a little cheat sheet right here. Herbs are at 95 degrees, so very low temperature. And we're gonna put it right there at 95. Now we go just let it set and do its thing, and I'll see you back here when we check on them. All right, so we have now run for a little more than four hours. Let's check this. Oh yeah, that looks absolutely perfect. So and these are nice and crispy, no moisture in them at all. So now it's time to store it away. Okay, so I store my herbs in these, just a regular mason jar. I have these plastic lids that work great for herbs. And I use these label makers and I always make a little label with what it is because let's be real it doesn't matter how much you think that you'll look at this and know it's bee balm or be able to smell it and know it's bee balm <laughs> you'll be thankful for the label later so i'm going to put bee balm but i'm also going to put the date i either harvested it or bought it which is june 2023 now, typically, if you keep these in a cool, dark place, they will be good for about a year. They'll keep their potency. And the best way to tell is the color and the smell. If you can still smell it really well, if you can still see some of the green, some of the vibrancy, then it's probably a potent herb. And it's not gonna hurt you after it loses its potency to make it into a tea. It just, it's not gonna do much for you. It'll do a lot more the more potent it is. Lance is home and Daisy hears Lance <laughs> coming out of the car. So bee balm, June 2023. All right, now we just need to take all of this. I have six trays and we're gonna put it in this jar. All right, that's all there is to it. Now let's make some tea. All right, here we go. This is my absolute favorite tea cup. You brew the tea right in the cup. It's got a little strainer. And this is super duper easy. Oh, you can, you can just scoop out a little bit, depending on how potent you want it. And fill your little strainer up or your tea bag or whatever you have. And then we're gonna pour the boiling water over it. And then cover and let it steep for about 10 minutes. Okay, 10 minutes it's been, so we're gonna pull this off and take the herbs out. We have this lovely herbal tea. All right, that's all there is to it. Let's take a sip. Mmm, it's delicious. So if you wanna learn more about herbal remedies and all the things that might be lurking in your backyard that you can use as medicine, I highly recommend the Herbal Academy. 
Um, I'll put a link down there below. I've taken some of the classes and they're amazing. They have courses, but also they have something called the herbarium where they have monographs for all sorts of different plants that list all of their medicinal qualities and descriptions and when to harvest and how to harvest and how to use them. It is just an amazing website. So I will, um, I'll put a link there so you can access that. And if you got some value out of this, please be sure to give us a like and subscribe so that you can follow our journey as we're building our homestead from the roots up.